Hi everyone, I'm Scott Davenport. In this Plotograph video, I'm going to go through a few more uh, other advanced things we can do with Plotograph. If you haven't watched the previous videos I've put out, go check those out. That's going to show you all the basics about how to do your masking, your animation points, and some uh, finer things like stabilization points, all of which I'm going to use in this video here. So uh, what's I want to cover first? I've got this uh, photo here. It's a nice reflection area. And you can see I've drawn a bunch of various lines. And if I hit the B key, I've masked away motion from the top of the scene. And what I want to show you is first what we have done with stabilization points, uh, just a few small dots around here to kind of affix things at the bottom of this reflecting pool. That's just to refine our motion. But also what I'd like to do is add in a little more of a shimmering effect. So you can see kind of this area right here is where I've centered a lot of my motion from. And it's radiating outward, kind of like if I dropped a rock in the center of that pool. Well, I want to add a bit of a shimmery type look. So I'm going to press the V key and add a few more points just kind of around in between where I've set motion already. Okay, and now I'm going to press the J key, which is my lasso tool. So I can circle around these various points and then adjust them accordingly. And what I want to do is have a little bit of motion in the opposite direction of my radial lines. So I'll do that there. These two across the top, have them kind of come back in. And then these one, two, three, four, right through here and have those kind of radiate back in. So that when I generate the animation, and I would do this through the rest of the scene as well, as I generate the animation, it's gonna add uh, a little bit of conflicting motion there. And just those small tugs in either direction, I found gives a nice, nice look of a, a shimmery reflection. So if you don't want a, a pure directional motion, do a little bit of a pull in both directions. And so you can see up in the, the top areas here, right in this area here, We've got a, a smoother animation going on. We have things moving in both directions, and it's kind of just giving that that kind of, that shimmer and glow. And if I were to do that through the rest of the scene too, we'd see uh, some changes there. One other thing I want to point out with this particular photo or plotograph is the mode that I'm using for the animation. So I have it set to infinity right now, and for most of the time I use that. There are a few other modes. There's blend, end to end, and circular. We talk about these from the bottom up, actually. So circular, as you might think, if you have an object and you want to have it move around in a circle, you can set that. You, 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 know, you pick your object, you'd move it around the scene, and then a circular animation would take care of making that smooth. Similarly, we have end to end. That's something if you want to have something move to a position and then move back to its source. Uh, one example I've seen of this is like a, a record on a DJ's table scratching. Uh, or you know, a good example of a yo-yo would be you know going down and coming back up. Anything that you want to have move to a position and move back. For my type of photography, I either use blend or infinity. And I want to show you the difference here with blend. So I'm going to run blend and see what how how that looks a little bit different. And it's a matter of trying and experimenting to see which one's going to work better for the particular type of motion that you want for your scene. So we can see here, this is blend running. It's a lot smoother, a lot slower, a lot softer. And for this one, I think I'd have to add in a little bit more work so that this archway becomes a little bit smoother out. But I like the look of blend for this one. So I'm probably going to spend a little more time with this particular photo and uh, fine tune the animation so it works nicely with blend. A couple other things I want to show you too. Uh, something new that Plotograph has added in is the ability to have audio in your animation. So over on the right hand side, we now have an audio icon and we can choose different settings and there's a whole variety of sounds here. And of course you can upload a custom file. For this scene, I chose something apropos, lapping waves. And this option I wanna talk about a little bit here, sync audio to video loop. Sometimes that might make sense, sometimes not. It's important to notice this is a six second audio loop and in my animation settings, my default is a three second animation. So if I were to cap this setting here to sync it to the video loop, the two sounds wouldn't line up and it wouldn't sound right. So when I export this, I wanna make sure that I export at least six seconds of video so that I get that full six second uh, you know, audio clip to go with it. 
Um, and so I can go ahead and generate that. I'm not sure if the audio is going to come through my mic, but we'll give it a shot. Let me turn this volume up here. All right, and so that is all going to be part of the video that I export. Now, one other thing that's really cool, I'm really excited about this feature, is replacing an image. So I like the photo that I worked with, but after making this photograph, I did some more work on the photo itself. I don't have to go and redo all the animation. I can go and replace the photo. So if you've worked on your photo again in Photoshop and Lightroom and On One and Affinity Pro, whatever it might be, whatever you're using for your photos, you can just swap it in. And so I'm going to go to File and Replace Image. I'll go to my desktop and I'll choose the new version of the photo. And this is very important. Keep project data. So you're going to keep all of your animations all of your anchor points, all your masks, everything, just replacing underneath it the photo. And so now you're going to see I've got a lot more detail in my clouds, and then I can regenerate my new animation, and everything else will still be in place, and I've just been able to improve the photo, the base that I've worked with for the project. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and the whole series on uh, you know, kind of getting up to speed here on Plotograph. There's new features coming out in the software all the time. It's one of the nice things about it being cloud-based. It seems every week or two there's something new to explore and play with. And uh, as major features roll out, eh, probably guess I'm going to do another video or two about Plotograph. So have fun, make some animations, share your work, and enjoy.